momentum builds as the week goes on. It is a great day to really throw ourselves into important tasks and get ahead of our personal and professional life. With such a great Monday today, it is my pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to you all for the five-day national level faculty development program on advancing towards sustainable teaching and learning pedagogy under DBT Star College scheme organized by departments of biochemistry, biotechnology, mathematics, computer science and physics of Congo Arts and Science College, Eero, Tamil Nadu. Prayer is an opportunity to spend time with God. It energizes the heart of a believer through the power of the spirit. It releases the power of God's blessing on our life and the circumstances. Now I invite Ms. Vijay Lakshmi for the prayer song. கல்லைகள் வாழும் இடமெல்லாம் இந்த அலை மகள் நலம் புரிகிறாள் கல்வி அமுதம் அருள்கிறாள் சொல்லி சொல்லி தருகிறாள் திருமகள் இவள் கருணை தானம் அறிவு தாகம் தீர்க்குது செல்வம் கல்வி இரண்டையும் நம் வாழ்வில் ஒன்றாய் சேர்க்குது வித்யாலட்சுமி வருகை என்று வீணை நீட்டி பாடுவோம் நித்தமும் அவள் புகழை போற்றி நர்தனங்கள் ஆடுவோம் Thank you, Vijay Lakshmi. With the blessings of the Almighty, let us start our five-day faculty development program. A warm and sincere welcome gives a caring and makes people feel comfortable as well as make them feel that they have made a good choice. Nurturing these relationships is a crucial part for growing a successful profession. Now, I invite our college DBT program coordinator, Dr. A.K. Vidya, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Biochemistry, an energetic, hardworking, amiable, and charming person to welcome the gathering. Thank you, Deepa. Yeah, pleasant morning to all. With elated and cheerful spirits, I welcome you all for the five-day national level faculty development program on advancing towards sustainable teaching and learning pedagogy, jointly organized by the star departments of our college, biochemistry, biotechnology, mathematics, computer science, and physics under the prestigious DBT star college team. And on this special occasion, it's my privilege to deliver the welcome address. At the outset, on behalf of our institution, I'm honored to welcome our resource person of the day, Professor Dr. Sultan Ahmed Ismail, a renowned soil biologist and ecologist and presently a member in the Tamil Nadu State Development Policy Council, Chennai and Chhattisgarh. Legends like Professor Dr. Sultan Ahmed Ismail, sir, are intelligent, intelligible people who were willing to walk the extra mile to contribute their vision to the society. Their exploration gives a facelift to the society and many transformation happens. We have a lot to learn from their life and achievements. It's really a fortunate moment for all of us to have such an eminent academician and scientist who has achieved numerous accolades to be amidst us today. Thank you, sir, for your gracious presence and your inspiring lecture, certainly going to greatly enlighten the day for all of us. Hearty welcome to you, sir. Thank you. I'm also delighted to welcome our esteemed resource persons of the five-day webinar, Ms. Meera Nadrajan, NLP trainer from Pune, Dr. Manu Mangatu, research consultant from Kerala, our alumni, Dr. S. Sudarshan, Associate Professor in Anatomy, Melaka Manipal Medical College, and Ms. Anupama Harshal, Consultant, Mana Human Atlas Initiative, Isa Pune. They, with their scintillating lectures, going to engage and stimulate the minds with the new dimensions on the emerging trends in teaching and learning pedagogy in these five days. We are indeed so proud and privileged to have them with us for this program. With brimming happiness, I extend a warm welcome to our correspondent, Thiru Palnisami Avirgal. It's really our pleasure to have his immense support and guidance with us for such initiatives at the Institute and for always being our side, cheering up to undertake any kind of task with much confidence. Welcome you, sir. 
I extend a hearty welcome to our principal, who not only leads us in the venture of exploring knowledge, but becomes a part in every activity as a member and guides us in parallel. With much excitement, I welcome you, sir. Any scheme or project implemented without the support or participation of beneficiaries would not be successful. We are indeed elated with the overwhelming response, and it's a pride moment saying that as many as 400 participants from all over the country have registered for this webinar. I'm much pleased and honored to welcome all the participants from various colleges across the country, and it's a great pleasure to have you with us. Welcome you all. I would like to express our sincere greetings to the DBT coordinators, Dr. C. Deepa, Dr. N. Sangeeta, Dr. S. Nagarajan, Mr. P. Ramesh, and Mrs. P. Maithili, and all the faculty members of the organizing committee of STAR departments for their immense support and for making excellent arrangements for the program in such a short span of time. Special welcome to all the heads of various departments of our college, my dear colleagues, non-teaching staff, and all the invitees for taking the time off from the busy schedule to grace this program. Well, with these words, I once again extend a hearty welcome to all of you. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, Vidya ma'am, for a warm welcome. Now I call upon Dr. N. Sangeeta, Department Coordinator and Associate Professor, Department of Biochemistry, who has energy to work round the clock to introduce our chief guest for today's program, Dr. Sultan Ahmed Ismail, teacher, soil biologist and ecologist, and also member Tamil Nadu State Development Policy Council, Chennai. Please, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, my dear participants. I welcome you all for this grand occasion on the five-day national level faculty development program on advancing towards sustainable teaching and learning under DBT Star College School. Good morning to one and all present here. I am privileged and humbled to take this opportunity to introduce our chief guest and resource person of the day, Professor Dr. Sultan Agamad Ismail. Dr. Sultan Agamad Ismail, sir, is a soil biologist, ecologist, advisor and former director of the Ecoscience Research Foundation, a not-for-profit organization in Chennai. It's a proud moment for all of us as our renowned chief guest, Dr. Sultan Agamad Ismail, has been appointed by our Honorable Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, through M.K. Stalin Avarhal, as member in State Development Policy Council recently. And he is also serving as a member in Task Force Planning Commission, Government of Chhattisgarh. He is a dynamic person and he has completed his PhD in Geology from the University of Madras in 1984. He is honored with a DSC in Geology from the University of Madras in 2001. He has rich teaching experience in the Department of Geology. He was the head of the Department of Geology and later the Department of Biotechnology, the new college, Chennai. He also worked as the research director in Dr. M. G. R. Janaki College, Chennai. He has done extensive work in both research and applied on ecology and environment, earthworms and organic imports since 1978. He has been associated with several institutions, farmers and self-help groups for promoting the concepts of ecology, sustainability, organic concepts, waste management, wastewater treatment, etc. He has to his credit 17 awards for his achievements to mention a few here like he has received Vocational Service Award in 1992 by the Rotary Club of Metro. He has received Exnora Friend of the Environment Award in 1993, presented by the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. He also received Commonwealth Association of Science, Technology and Mathematics Educators Cosme Award, United Kingdom in 1993. He was honored with Environmental Award by Green India Foundation in 1999. He was he has, sorry, he, he has received award for vocational excellence from Rotary Club of Besan Nagar, Chennai in 2002. He conferred with the Anna Award by the Department of Environment, Government of Tamil Nadu, India for Environmental Education and Awareness in 2005. He has received Agriculture Leadership Award by the Bangalore University and the National Council for Organic Farming, Government of India in January 2009. He was honored with Award of Excellence presented by the Governor of Jargon in December 2010. He has classified as one among the top 10 people of Tamil Nadu in 2013 by Ananda Vigadan, leading Tamil magazine. He has received Lifetime Achievement Award by Pap Setruchi in September 2014. He has received the Special Contribution Award for Outstanding Contribution to Earthworm Industry at the First World Earthworm Industry Forum in China in June 2018. 
He has received the Champion of Chennai Award in August 2019, the Beacon of Hope Award by AISS, and the annual Sarjeshi Bose Award by the Indian Science Monitor during February 2020. He served as a member of the Tamil Nadu Curriculum Framework Committee to oversee syllabus revision and implementation for classes 1 to 12 of the Government of Tamil Nadu during 2018. He was a chairman of the Scientific Review Committee, initiative for research and innovation in science program of the Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of India, during 2017 to 2019. He served as a vice president in preparatory committee of the World Earthworm Industry Federation. Also, he served as a chairman of Deserv Dr. Four Earthworm Standardization Research Center Technical Steering Committee in China. He has published thirteen books, five audio visual aids. His books, like the Earthworm Book and Man Makkal Magasul in Tamil, are popular among both academics and others interested in earthworms and soils. While his coordinated simple task great concept is a boon to science teachers and students with hundred life science experiments, which any child can perform without a laboratory. He has traveled widely in India and abroad with rich expertise in environmental issues and has addressed to more than 30,000 people by the time. He has published about 80 research and review papers in national and international journals. He guided 32 MPhil and 20 PhD students. He has organized symposia workshops in various places across India. We are fortunate and privileged to have Dr. Sultan Ahmed Ismail sir Ahmed sir on this spectacular day and we are ever grateful to you sir for finding the time to be with us despite your tight schedule now it's time for you and we are awaiting to listen to your talk sir please i thought you were giving the lecture and i was supposed to introduce you sangeet <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> thank you ma thank you very much just a minute give me a minute i just trying I will give time. Your questions. Fine. Good. Yeah. Good morning, everybody, and uh, it's uh, my privilege and uh, my thanks to Kongu Arts and Science College in Erode, which has always been a sort of a uh, associated body to me, where I love to visit and interact with the departments. Thanks to Dr. Vidya, Dr. Sangeeta for those pleasant words. and uh, all the participants just relax i just want to take you through a journey of my own personal experiences sharing my experiences i'm not going to teach you anything we are all teachers and we know we took up teaching because we are all teachers right so we we don't need uh, more more to, to be told as to what is what and how it's what i i just took up this fancy term 20 because i was going through some of the traits which a teacher is supposed to have and uh, something fascinated me to prepare this presentation because i used to talk to teachers for a long time and uh, i thought why not we give this fancy name and i selected about 20 traits based on my own experience uh, this is my 47th year of teaching so based on that experience some traits which i thought i would share with you and uh, i think uh, almost every one of us have lost somebody who is very close to us because of the pandemic so let us sincerely pray that they all rest in peace and you all please take care and stay safe the problem with today's uh, workshops especially teachers workshop teachers please understand you know like most teachers workshop some senior fellow a bald man like me will come and try to talk to you people and try to convert you people into another miniature bald man now you bald teacher young teacher you go to the institution and try to train your children as another set of mini bald people that is not a workshop so in this particular program today we are just going to have some sort of sharings of information during the course of my lecture i may mention a few subjects so please don't mistake me some subjects which i felt were difficult i may try to talk about it as how i overcome overcame them so it's it's not against any particular subject and i'll be taking some light jibes of some words and pronunciations so professors please don't mistake me it's it's just sort of humor and the way we can communicate in a classroom so i have not come here to teach anything new to you just sharing information 
and also probably learn in the process from what you are going to talk to me. One more thing I would like to tell you teachers. Today with the online teaching, most of us, we prepare these presentations. They are called as presentations. They are not called as PowerPoints. PowerPoint is a software. In fact, I don't use PowerPoint. I use another software called as Keynote because I use a Mac machine. Now, unfortunately, because PowerPoint became popular by its own name, like what we call it as Xerox, even though it is uh, photocopying, and Sunmica, even though it is lamination. So unfortunately, this, has, this tool is today used just to escape ourselves. I have seen many teachers just write sentence after sentence, make PowerPoint presentations, and just read them for your students online. And that new name given to this is death by PowerPoint. How boring it becomes. It becomes so boring that children are not interested to listen to after some time. So also please try to understand how to prepare a presentation as we go through. We all said that television is very bad for children. We said television is spoiling the brains of children, molding the brains of children. And then we said they are just trying to mimic what is happening on the television. So whatever happens in the television, the child is trying to copy it from there. And then we said phone. Oh, no. Phone is worst. Phone is worst. Don't give the phone at all to children. Don't give the phone at all to children. Because the moment you give the phone, the children will get so immersed in it. So don't give the phone. And then what happened? We said that your brains will all go away. Your brains will all go away. Don't watch the phone. And children got so engrossed, they did not even care to know what was happening behind them. So much into phone. All this is before 2019 BC. BC is before Corona. Before 2019. 2020, we told children, watch the television, Kalvi TV, watch the phone, watch the electronic things. So what has happened? There was a petrol car. Then came an electric car. And then people felt electric car will stop in the way. There will be so many complications. There came a hybrid car. We had a physical classrooms. And then came the digital classes. Now, even after the pandemic goes, we are going to have digital classes in the name of blended learning. Please understand. So from board to the tablet, from board to the computer, from board to the iPhones, iPads, and this is how online classes are going to be. So what was happening formally, a child is going to relax. We do not know what will happen. People will log in. Even today, some people would do this as well. We do not know. You will log in, and then we don't know what you'll do. And then we do not know whether you are there or not. So in, in, this, in this situation, teachers rose up to the occasion. Teachers came up with their own innovations on how to teach. And uh, we don't know how much was able to reach because there is no proper internet facility, how much was transferred between the child and the machine, and moreover, how many problems the teachers have faced by their own family members or, or by outsiders. Because unfortunately in India, my own experience looking at the faculty, as the number of growing uh, teachers are from the female side, unfortunately when they work from home and when they are at work, too many doubts come to the family and they go and prod the lady, where did you keep the keys? Where are the money? Where is the person? So, so many questions, in spite of all these things, teachers performed. In spite of helicopter parenting, where you know parents started looking at what the child is doing, what the child is reading, what, whether the teacher is teaching properly, what are the uh, grammatical errors that the teacher is doing, all these things, they started monitoring and communicating, creating, creating a big mess for the teachers. But I, as a person working with the rural area, I'm worried about the divide. The divide between, between the urban area and the rural area. How many children in the rural area would have access to all these details? That is where we have to understand. I have always been fascinated with these two terms. Do we talk in the classroom? 
or do we teach in the classroom? You may say, sir, what is the difference? So it's both, you know, like we talk and when talking, we teach. I always find a small, minute difference between the two. When we talk, students listen to us. But when we teach, students learn from us. When students listen, they will remember. But when the students learn, they don't forget. Now, what is the major difference? Remembering maybe for a day or for a week or for a semester of one examination, not forgetting is for a lifetime. If they remember, they will qualify. But if they don't forget, they will achieve something in life. If they qualify, they will survive. They will get a job. But if they achieve something in life, they will impress on society. And if they survive, one day they are dead and gone. But if they impress on society, they become immortal by their work. So it all starts from what we're going to do in the classroom. Are we going to talk in the classroom or are we going to teach in the classroom? So please start thinking different. I'm basically a zoologist. So I use some animal characters wherever possible. So please think different. One of the most important thing is communication. Communication. If I'm not able to communicate, then the communication breaks. And that is called as communication. That is teacher trait number one. What is it? A teacher should be a strong communicator. A teacher should be a strong communicator. Please understand that a teacher should be a strong communicator. What is the meaning of this? Today, I am talking to you. So I am trying, my intention is to talk to you. My intention to talk to you will continue till I get your attention. The moment your attention goes, my intention to talk to you vanishes. In a classroom, what used to happen was we used to tap the table, listen to me, listen to me. But today online, you do not know what is happening. So I do not have the visibility of attention of my students, but my intention to communicate has to continue is a novel effort which we have to bring in forward. Because only what happens when you communicate, when I have come with an open mind, you have come with an open mind. At the end of this session, we should have exchanged some views. That is the beauty of communication. And for that purpose, a good teacher should be one who is a good listener. What should the teacher listen? Listen to what is not being said by the student. Now that is a def definitely difficult trait. An excellent teacher is one who understands by looking at his children, by looking at his students, by looking at his classroom or her classroom and find out, you know, like some child is not able to express, but I know that the child is going through some problem. I'll have to help that child out. So a good teacher is one who has big ears. So listen more carefully and more responsively. It's one day talking comes later. Unfortunately, we talk a lot, but do we also listen? So kindly emphasize on listening and please start creating open-ended questions, especially online. You know, if you like, just start asking your students, did you like the chapter? The children will say yes or no. But if you start asking, how did you like the chapter in the book? Then the child will start explaining about the chapter, which makes the child communicable. Right? And can we appreciate I think we have lost that, uh, you know, once we left the classroom, we came onto the online classes. We have forgotten the basic things of appreciating students. You know, it gives you delight. Communication is so very important, very important. Unfortunately, we don't emphasize on communication, but communication is so important. Look at this particular video, short video. This lady is buying a cup of coffee from the hotel, from the restaurant. She got the coffee comes over here, takes sugar, adds the sugar, looks for the spoon, there is no spoon. She calls and says, ah. and he faithfully does it. So unless you communicate, whether it is this or anything, anything, effective communication,
actually, he gave a picture la, and he received la, what he wanted. La, right? La, la, In la, disappointment. La, la. So communication becomes important. It is, your words can be minimal, but what is your voice tone? What is your body language? Because vo voice tone is very, very important. Otherwise, you will create a mess. You will create a mess. Here is a very senior expert pianist who is playing the piano. And she's going to sing a song. So he starts playing the piano. voice tone can damage your issues. So, you know, like communication is a, is a beautiful art. Unfortunately, we lose it in a classroom. These are all some of the examples which I have drawn myself because these were experiences in my own classroom. A child comes late to the class. When I was a student, this is what happened to one of some of my classmates. And uh, the teacher would ask, why are you late? So the child goes into a sort of a daydream and the teacher shouts at the student. And the student is very serious now. Listens to the, all the blah, blah we do in the classroom as teachers. And the, the happiest moment of the class, the happiest moment of the class is when the bell rings. So the child leaves the school. So that becomes the best thing. Trait number three, are we good engagers? We sometimes, some of the professors have this strong feeling, you know, that I should have a stern face, strict outlook, only then children will listen to me. Can we add some humor? Can we add some humor? Can we have some creative ways of expressing ourselves? Right? Can we tell some stories? Engage students? Maintain eye contact? Can we take it through them? Please start thinking all this. All these are from my own personal experiences. And students must be taught on how to think and not what to think. Don't spoon feed them with every information. Make them think. Make them analyze, make them innovate. For example, some subjects, math teachers, please don't mistake me. I had a very bad math teacher, so uh, something on maths. These, these are all very important subjects, but how are we going to feed them? How best can we communicate? How best can we give them? Because today's classroom, what happens is, the teacher goes into the classroom and says H2O. Chemistry was another subject where I had difficulty. H2O. And the learner understands it as H2O. So can we start brain balance classrooms? Whether it is online or whether it is physical class. Brain balance classrooms are where, whereas teacher says H2O and the child immediately understands it as water. The teacher, I'm telling you, using you simple examples. Your teacher says uh, four plus one and the child understands it as five. These are called as brain-balanced classrooms. Now, for a brain-balanced classroom, do we have that enough amount of patience and competence? You know, some, unfortunately, I have seen nowadays many teachers when I observe, when I go to schools and colleges, for anything you carry a chart, put the chart on the board and say, ask the children, take down, draw down, do this, do that. No. If you can't draw on the board, Please don't expect your student to draw. Let me be very clear with you. Unless the teacher, you take the chart if you want, but you must draw the diagram on the board. You don't uh, give an excuse that you don't have time and just put a chart and ask the children, take down. This is not the way things happen. Unfortunately, today PowerPoint is playing that role. You see, I'm telling you a simple example of Amoeba. I'm basically a zoology teacher. The first class for my first year students would be on pylum protozoa amoeba. Not first class, what I mean is in the, the first few chapters. Amoeba, I will tell in the classroom, is totally, you can draw off any shape. It has any shape possible. It doesn't have a particular shape. And then I will use color chalk pieces. I used to use a lot of color chalk pieces and draw it on a blackboard. Nowadays, you have all the whiteboards and magic boards and the smart classrooms. But I used to draw it on the board. The moment I used to finish drawing, in spite of I telling the students that it is any shape, you can draw any shape, and then I will go on the rounds, and there'll be 110 students in my class in 1974-75 when I joined. It was 110 students in my classroom. Out of 110 students, 
at least 108 would have drawn the way as I have drawn on the board. Not that they don't know how to draw, but they don't know from where to start and where to end. So teacher's impact on the child is so huge that don't please shy away this responsibility of drawing it. And don't pressurize children that you study, study, study. You know, like everything is today available. I used, I had to remember things, but today you have Alexa, you have Siri, you have Google uncle, you have so much of information that how best we can take it. Very important requirement for a teacher again, have patience. Patience, working with students is easier. Working with colleagues today is becoming difficult. Do we have the patience to work with our colleagues? Please start thinking. It is not an easy task. It is not at all easy. It requires a great deal of patience. So let us start working on those lines. Because sometimes what happens, you know, uh, after supposing you attend a workshops, or you are going to have five days. Other teachers may give you much better inputs, other speakers. So you go back and you go to your department and then you say, hey, can we do this way? Your own friends would tell you, hey, mind your business plan. Why are you trying to bring new changes and giving me more work? So sometimes what happens is, even if you want to change, you will be surprised to find that your own colleagues sometimes may not cooperate. Because the situation today, anywhere in the world is, if among a world of all candles, if there's a beautiful glowing electric bulb, it will be put on the gallows. And one small request. I saw some professors of English also attending over here. I think Professor Palni Sami and other people I happened to see, I was just scrolling through the chat box. You know, you know like uh, we have this bad habit, habit of interrupting children. Bad habit of interrupting children. Now, supposing a teacher starts in the classroom, this is for all the subjects. I'm giving you a simple examples. It is not just for English, for all the subjects. Supposing the teacher says, Millie, give me a sentence starting with I. And the child starts with I is, I am so sure as a teacher that I try to interrupt and say, no, it is I am. And the child completes the sentence. I am the ninth letter of the alphabet. Had you kept quiet as a teacher, the child would have been correct because I is the ninth letter of the alphabet. So how best can we understand these components? One more trait, trait number five, very important. Have strong work ethics. A good teacher never quits, especially not out of students. I find sometimes young teachers getting frustrated. That student, you know, I'm fed up with the student. No, nobody can get fed up with a student. Can we understand? Can we take up some responsibilities? Can we try to, we should accept our own responsibility when a student misbehaves in my own classroom. I am responsible for it. The student is not responsible for it. Trait number six, please have strong perceptions. Yes, number one, great teachers know they do not know everything. We have this bad habit that if I have done my PhD, I have done my DSA, I know everything. No, we don't know everything. In Tamil, there is a beautiful saying, Katradu Kaiman Nalavudan, right? Kalladu Ulagalu. So, what we have learned is only a fistful. What we do not know is worldwide. It's, it's a, as big as an ocean. So, please first accept that we do not know everything. Second great perception for pedagogy is a great teacher always is willing to learn. Willing to learn. Third, very important. They are not threatened by thoughtful questions of the student. Some teachers have this habit when a student questions, you say, no, sit down. No, sit down. A great teacher, a good teacher will never be offended by any questions raised. A great teacher will always learn. Real learning occurs, especially with the students question and they think. And of course, they encourage learning for a lifetime, not for a semester. We have this habit of telling you, know, you finish off this semester and then it is all over. My headache is over. No, a great teacher teaches beyond the semester, beyond the semester. These are very important. There are different types of teachers. One is authoritarian teaching, you know, like as though, you know, like I don't care. Just shut up, sit down, listen to me. That's all. Second group of teachers, I don't care what the hell you do. My job is to teach. Third type of teachers, uninvolved. 
I wanted a job, I took a job. I don't care whether you learn, whether I teach properly or not. I don't care about it. But fortunately, all of us who have joined here, we don't belong to this category. We belong to a balanced teaching category. This is pupil-centered, but not controlled by the students. This helps in the holistic development of students, right? Great teachers are always prepared. Teacher trait number seven. Can we design? Can we prepare charts? Can we prepare things? Because you know what happens is, when there's a lightning, you can see it first. You hear the thunder later. So visual perception is the first step. How many of us take pain to create a model and take it to the classroom? I'm not talking now as a, as a sort of a member or anything. Even my, when I started my career, and I used to teach amphioxus filter feeding mechanism, I used to prepare paper models and take them to the class and show it to the children. For EMPHIL histochemistry, I used to create models to teach and understand the concepts of blocking and unblocking. So these are all possible. It all just requires some amount of imagination. Can we do it? Because when you look at any classroom, let us understand the concept. We are basically human beings. We have only a limited attention time. That is the prime time. So you start teaching, there is a prime time, you are listening, suddenly, you know, like a student is wading away from you because so many things will come in the mind of a student at that time. At that point of time, create a joke. Don't shout. Create a joke or create some attraction. Bring back the child again. That is why in movies you find, in a serious picture, you will find that a comedy scene will come in between because if there is a seriousness throughout, then people will leave the theater. Every one of us has a limited attention time, especially children, age plus two minutes. So you people in college, you are handling 18-year-olds and 20-year-olds. Their attention span is only 20 minutes max, 20 to 25 minutes. And you want to talk continuously for one hour. How can a child listen to you? Impossible, impossible, unless you create some entertainment in between. Otherwise, if you're not going to do it, this is what the child will do in the classroom. This is what will happen. And if it is a physical classroom, the child will say, I'll go to the restroom and come back. You cannot say no. The child will go to the restroom. While coming back, it will not come back straight. It will go all along the compound, office, and then come to the classroom. That means the child is not interested in your class. These are all reflections. If the number of children going to a restroom increases in your classroom, that means the children are not interested in my classroom. That's it over. It's a simple, simple. And English, because we are teaching in English, and English is not our mother tongue. Uh, let English teachers don't mistake me. But English is not our mother tongue. Please understand that. So how best can I teach in English? Please try to think these things. Don't just go and talk English and say that this is English. Because between ages 12 to 15, pronunciation becomes very important. In schools, we do not know how much care has been taken. So how are we going to do it in our own colleges? You know, like, uh, that's the reason now Z is called a Z. Because uh, many, many children tend to pronounce it as Jigot, Jiro. So, you know, like, you, you, you pronounce Z and make it zero, Zygot. So bringing all these changes becomes very important. I'm not trying to tell what's not happening. This is near your place. I took the permission because I happened to meet the owner and uh, he had hosted me for a meeting. What is written over here in Tamil? In Tamil, it is written. In Tamil, it is written as Joan. So what? It is Joan. But he actually means Zone. This is what the hotel is. It's Joan Hotel, but it is Zone. So a child whose mother tongue has been Tamil, and has studied Ja as Jo, has to pronounce as Zo. How much patience are we taking to train the child? Similarly with X, Xerox is Xerox. So this Z and X, please teachers try to improve our children, try to improve our children. And many people tell me, no, 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 no. Once the child practices, it will become perfect. I don't believe in it. Because if the child continues to talk in a wrong way, then even mistakes can become perfect. So please don't tell that. And one important question, you know, like now supposing I ask you now, there are so many participants seated over here. And if I ask you, 
do you understand your answer would be yes sir yes sir this is one question which is not supposed to be asked in the classroom because in a classroom if you ask the question do you understand the answer would be yes we must always try to frame a question from what i am teaching to identify whether the child has understood or not so don't avoid these questions especially this and this always and never you are always bad you never come prepared please avoid this these words inside a classroom never never try to motivate so what did you learn from here right every rule has an exception similarly every child is different every child is different when every child is different and if you don't understand that and keep on talking in the same language and ask this question then the child will say a teacher is that clear fine why should a child study a child should study because it wants to earn money maybe it likes to travel abroad maybe it wants a job we all dream very big but finally we settle to mediocrity maybe probably because when we were young we read a lot of books but today the moment you tell they depend on google uncle they don't read books and google has become something which is very important for guru purnima or the teachers day so you know like the whole concepts are changing trait number 8 are we humble enough a good teacher should become humble my teacher used to tell me always professor murthy i always remember him thanks to my teacher professor murthy always used to tell me a tree grows very stubborn a tree grows very stubborn and straight but when it bears fruit it bends so as you grow as you learn as you become a teacher become humble humility because simple things this actually happened in my life where in the beginning of my uh, my teaching maybe it was during 77 78 some period that time i was teaching cordata in a classroom when one of my student got up suddenly maybe uh, 77 78 he suddenly got up and asked me sir is there a frog which uh, uh, releases the eggs Uh, after fertilization swallows them keeps it in the stomach and breeds them well today you have google then there was no google or any uncle who could help me i said uh, i don't know but why do you want it he said uh, sir uh, if you know it you let me know i forgot about it completely but i then i went to a book exhibition at the book exhibition i happened to see a separate book on amphibians on frogs alone beautiful color book i bought it i bought that book i read from page 1 till the last page and there was one particular variety of frog rio batracus which swallows the eggs and then breeds them so all the uh, in, in incubation period takes place inside the stomach of the frog which means the frog will not eat during that period the frog will not secrete any enzymes or acid in the stomach so i went to the class i said sujan please stand up sujan got up i said sujan you wanted to know it's rio batracus yes there is a species and because you questioned i learned it and here is the book as a gift to you i gave the book to him and then i asked him why do you say so why did you ask this question then he said sir i heard there are some countries who are planning to find out what could be the trigger which stops secretion of enzymes and uh, acid in the stomach so that they can design the trigger and spray it on enemy territories so that people will eat but will not digest and die out of hunger how bio medicine or bio attacks were being planned in those days so i thanked him for teaching me several years later when i was traveling uh, to the airport international travel suddenly one man in full uniform of a security officer came stood in front of me saluted me and said sir you are student sujan reporting to you that is the beauty of a student teacher relationship right so please understand this concept straight number 9 act don't tell you don't tell the student don't do this and you do the same mistake don't do it right hence be ready be ready and do a self appraisal very simple you find out for yourself whether your teaching methodology is correct very simple second whether you have knowledge in that subject you see i have a highest degree 
I, I, I teach ecology, but suddenly if somebody calls me and says, go, go and teach physiology, I would say, no, I'm sorry, I can't. I will have to read because my knowledge on the subject matter may not match my syllabus. So knowledge in the subject matter, planning and design, time management and humane resources do you have? Do I am able to implement it, monitor it, take a feedback, analyze, change and modify. That's all very simple, very simple. Anybody can keep doing. Do a self-appraisal, but accept original. Don't, if you are a cat, don't project yourself as a tiger. You know, like if, I, if somebody tells me, what is your uh, analysis of yourself? I will say I have positive mental attitude. Yes. What does it mean? I am positive. I look always positive. I don't have any negative views in my mind. Second, I am mental. I do all cranky things so that I do good research. I work with people so you can call me. <clears throat> and the last one is, yes, I have an attitude because certain things I don't tolerate. That's why Vidya was getting upset to start in time. So I believe in certain things. So you can call it as an attitude. I don't bother about it. So everybody can analyze and find out what it is. But can anything replace a teacher? Because now all is online. And some people are saying, why not we make it 100% online? No teacher required. Everything is by uh, the iPad and things. Do you believe it's possible? It's something like this. Can this cat eat fish from the iPad? No, it can't take fish from the iPad. Similarly, a child can never gain knowledge from an iPad unless there is a teacher. So we have a major role to perform. So don't worry about it, but we must make a difference. We must make a difference. Are we punctual? Now, when Vidya said we are going to have the session at 10.30, I was already logged in at 10.15 when they were making all the online connections and talking and cranking and all those things were going on. I was already online. So can we be ahead of time? Can we link in early? Because the most important virtue of a teacher is be punctual, be punctual. And you become a spark plug now because everything is online. You should be a spark plug. Give the spark to the child. Don't be like a petrol tap, feeding completely notes after notes, page after page, PowerPoint after PowerPoint. No, just make a spark. Allow them to collect. Uh, and uh, you know, like uh, uh, teacher trait number 11, efficient and adaptive. Because online teaching is, most of us, we got adapted because of the change. We had to adapt and we adapted to it, right? And are we excellent organizers? Take up the critical points and always keep in mind for the next class, what you're going to share, how you're going to share. Sometimes this will help you spill. Spill is nothing but based on a situation. You develop a perception and then you have an intervention and you learn the process. Example, your head of the department calls and tells you this is your new job. And the perception, everybody is telling, oh, you got caught, you have heavy work, but you intervene, you do the work beautifully, and you have learned the process. Very simple mechanism is spill mechanism. Do the spill mechanism. One important request to you people, don't try to shout at others. At the same time, don't try to ask somebody to shut up and sit down. Listen to people. Please listen to people. You have the knowledge, you have the skills, you have the attitude. That's why we are all teachers. But how much are we overlapping them? How much are we overlapping? We have the knowledge, we have the skill, we have the attitude, but how much overlapping? Sometimes external sources may damage us. We may be working seriously. There may be somebody who will be creating mischief in us. At the same time, don't give too many commands to your students. We, I have seen many people talking so many things on the online, you know, like do this, do this, do this. It's not possible. I'll share with you a small joke here. But uh, uh, please forgive me if you don't like it. The dog is urinating on the sofa. The boss doesn't like it. So the boss drags the dog, takes it outside and shows you are supposed to do it here. He doesn't stop. He demonstrates. He demonstrates. Brings the dog back home. And the dog forgets the first command and follows the second command. So don't give too much, too many, too many instructions to your students, right? And always try to look in a proper perspective. Oh my God, such a bad thing. It's swallowing a small baby. Negative viewpoint. Unless you look at the other side, it is carrying its own baby, which is a positive viewpoint. So, you know, like look at the proper perception of students 
what they are trying to talk. This I deliberately put this because most of you would have read it. A bird in the bush. No, no. Sorry, it's a bird in the the bush. What is wrong? Your mistake. One is first, sir. Zero is last. No, a computer keyboard has zero in the last. So what? Here also I have two thes. When I can make such stupid mistakes on the screen, why not my student make the same mistake? Why is it that we always try to find mistakes in a student? In fact, yesterday I was in conversation with uh, another institution. I told them in our days, our teachers, our examiners used to look for what is good point we have written and we give the marks. Today, most of the evaluation is negative marking. What are the mistakes found in the paper so that I can reduce the marks? Please change. Negative marking is not the way why the student is spending their entire career with us. Look for positivity. And great teachers are very good friends. Motivate your students. Learn them. Don't classify them as good student, bad student. No, you know, don't complain. Don't complain. Have patience. Don't show your irritation. Please, teachers, don't. And uh, great teachers have empathy. Treat them with respect. Always command respect. Don't demand respect. Why I'm trying to tell you this is there are some children who have some problems. On the screen, you read it as SOS, but some children will read it as 808. One small mistake, and we call them as disabled. Because today, all integrated schools, we may get children from different backgrounds, and we are identifying more and more wrong in more and more people. Please, please don't do that. Please don't do. In my days, when I was a student, what the most the teacher will tell is, are you daydreaming? Pagal kanu kandriya? But today, the same one single word is split into so many things. ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, autism, slow learner, learning disabled, mentally retarded. How many classifications are we doing for classifying our children? I don't have time to go into all this because I will take another 10 minutes because they gave me only by, I think, Vidya, I think you gave me by 10.45, I'll use till 11.45. Okay, I have asked for one hour from you. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. And please understand that silence isn't empty. It is full of answers. If, if somebody doesn't answer you, that means there is something into it. That's the reason why when I wrote a book of poems, I called it as Silence Speaks to Me. Silence speaks. Silence speaks. A silence of my student always speaks to me. Please understand that. And we have this worst habit in schools and colleges. Schools and colleges will give one period or some time for physical training. And then some teacher will come and tell, I have not finished my syllabus as though they... A person who cannot finish the syllabus in the given time cannot finish the syllabus as long as you want. So, you, you, and then they take away the playtime from the children. Play is learning. Please, teachers, if anybody is associated also with schools, please do not cancel PT classes. They are our dreams. When I used to go to school, I always used to see when my PT class is because that was fun time for us, right? And please don't abuse students. I have seen many colleges, teachers shouting at students. You may not be doing it, but no, these abuses become very worse. Please don't do it. And never judge a child. Your one teacher may be not properly doing their job inside the classroom, will come and report to the whole department that student in that class is very bad. And you go into the class with your predisposed notion about that student. Never do it. Never do it. Every teacher can, even one single teacher can turn around a child. So never take another teacher's opinion when you're going to the classroom. We always do some mistake, whether it's parents or teachers, we do one mistake. And that is raising a child we want, not a child we have. You already understand. So allow your student to be a student. I do understand some parents, they have unfulfilled dreams. Even you as a parent, you may have unfulfilled dreams, which you want your children to do. So you want to force them to study. You want to operate their brains. And how much of brain is there? Now? Whatever is there alone will come. More than that cannot come from the paper. And you, even for one percentage mark, people are shouting now, especially this year, admissions, higher education, lots of competition because of high marks, right? If that is the case, what will happen? Your own students will try to hide from you. They will not talk to you. Whenever you happen to go there and you want to see, you want to go on the rounds, and you want to see where is that particular student, he will run away from you. He will not feed you. And always be positive thinkers. Please be positive. And can you smile, please? What is the point in not smiling? 
you can't go to the class as number two or number three here in the picture and say, good morning, students. Who is bothered about it? You see, children, they effectively communicate so beautifully. Can't we make it possible? We can also make it, right? Identify their competencies. And great teachers are continuous learners. Continuous learners. You know, like even for, even yesterday evening, I was sitting and again checking up the presentation, correcting some slides, deleting some slides because I have to finish in 60 minutes. So, you know, like, and uh, most of you people will feel, especially where Vidya has a control or the other heads of departments have control on the teachers. The others have registered on their own willingness. But the department where some teachers, I thought I would do something else today and they want me to attend this workshop. You may think that this is a break. Do you know why a car has a break? Why a bike has a break? Break is not to stop. Break is meant for you to go fast. If the brake doesn't work, you will not drive the car. You will not drive the bike. It is on the confidence that you have a good brake, you drive the car fast. You drive the bike fast. Is that clear? So if you consider that, yes, this workshop is a brake. This workshop is a brake for you to go fast in life, fast in your own things. Can we include some principles of learning? Because everything is changing now. Online examination, sustainable learning practices. Why I'm trying to tell you is, we are going through the same old culture. You know, I happened to visit a school where a teacher was teaching and this teacher was asking the children, which flower is yellow in color? And before the children could say, the teacher said, sunflower is yellow in color. You may say it is right. Right, Tana? Yes, it is right. Sunflower is yellow in color. But what I felt was, why sunflower? When will the child see sunflower? Every, almost every vegetable we eat has a yellow flower whether it is bitter gourd or lady's finger or rich gourd, cucumber, everything has a yellow flower. Can't we relate with, with the child? Why do we always give foreign examples to the children in our own classrooms, you know, even in higher education? Why is it so? And you know, like if I ask this beautiful flight flower, such a lovely laced flower, which flower is this? This is from my own garden. It's snake gourd. Snake gourd. Podalangai. You know, such beautiful things are available and why do I do with this? Now, for all those general quick things, because these are the way case-based studies are going to come up, questions are going to come up. A quick review. What has wheels and flies, but is not an aircraft? Start thinking. What has wheels and flies, but is not an aircraft? There's a clue. A garbage truck. It has flies, it has wheels. So how laterally we can make the children think and construct new things based on their own original understandings. For example, one, three, five, two, four, it's not six. What would be in that pace? Based on their own studies, clue automobile, the reverse gear. Right? Can we, can we, can we? Because today metacognitive strategies have come into play in education systems. It is thinking about what their own thinking. For example, how to apply their own thinking of physics. Here is a man trapped in room number, in the middle room. He can take door number one or door number two. If he takes door number one, there's a big lens and the sun rays will kill him. If he takes door number two, he will be swallowed by all the carnivores. How will this man escape? Very simple, very, very simple. But the child has to apply the knowledge of physics. That is, on and biology and ecology, he will wait till the sun sets. And when the moon comes, the, the lens will not burn him and he will escape through gate number one. Such simple lateral thinking is becoming important. And many learners, their heredity, environment, prior experiences should be brought in. For example, you know, like we always teach children, very simple, mouse is mice, louse is lice, so house is highs. No, sir, houses. Okay. So dice is dose. No, sir, dice is dice. We don't teach these exceptions. We will go on teaching the regular things and we forget to teach the exceptions. Can we have motivation to learn and sense self-affect? 
how the self is affected. Now, for example, in this English language, please teachers try to incorporate it in your classroom. Less means little, full means plenty. Less means little, full means plenty. And I am using a remote now in my hand. I have a remote. If I don't use this at all, if I use it very less, then this thing becomes useless. Is that clear? But if I use it fully, it becomes very good, useful. Perfect, perfect English. Apply this again. Some means little or less. Full means plenty. When I look at a beautiful thing, as something lovely, an expression comes from my mouth and that expression is ah. Oh. Now ah, oh, if it is little, kunchong, some, then it is awesome, very good. You understand? And if it is full of awe, oh, it is bad, awful. So English is a combination of words which we don't teach our children. Something if it is less, is correct, useless, but awesome is more. You will understand? Right? Same thing, noses smell, feet run. But what happens during a monsoon season? Noses run, feet smell. That's the reason why I try to teach these things to children. Uh, you know, because I'm associated even with government schools. How will my children remember? Because their mother tongue is not English. English professors, you teach. Mr. Arun Kamla, will you please switch off your mic? Mr. Arun Kamla, will you switch off your mic? Mr. Arun, please switch off your mic. Thank you. Now, yum is an alphabet, B is an alphabet. A is a vowel, U is a vowel. I-E-D, I-E-D. Perfect. But while writing, the teacher says, add two R's over here and one R over here. And my English teacher doesn't tell me to pronounce it as married. So how will my student remember? Very simple. When they're married, they are a couple. So there are two R's. When you're buried, you're buried alone. So there's a single R. Can we come into these sort of things? Very simple, make it jovial. In some classrooms in breaks, during the low time of the classroom, what is the difference between complete and finished? Have you completed your assignment? Have you finished your assignment? But if you marry the right, right person, your life is complete. If you marry the wrong person, your life is finished. Where you apply, how you apply words, how you take it, right? I am asking you simple questions for any sciences which you teach, any subject which you teach, what falls but never breaks and what breaks but never falls. Such things I want you people to interact with your children. Not the same textbook, not the same textbook. Very simple, very simple. Night falls, day breaks. Night falls, day breaks. That's it, over. Very, very, very simple. I'm so small and sometimes I'm missed. I get misplaced, misused. English teachers and all teachers who are teaching in English language, it's a very simple thing. It's a comma. It's a comma. Because comma is so important that we misuse it. Hang him not, leave him. Which means don't kill that person. You put the comma here, kill him, don't leave him. So a comma can kill a person. So how are we communicating? How are we doing it? What do you observe in the middle of March and April? I don't start thinking uh, uh, it's going to be a monsoon, it is this, it is that. No complications, a simple letter R. No other, no other uh, month has it in the middle. Can we start motivating our children? Can we start uh, telling our children? Right? Very simple things. If you have it, you want to share it. If you share it, you don't have it. So many good things are there which we can teach. We can make the students think, motivate. It's secret. That's it. Secret. Simple. Mr. Arun, you are disturbing us, Arun. Mr. Arun, you are disturbing us. The host, can you mute all? I'll unmute myself. Host, please mute sir, all. Sir, sir, we are doing it. We are doing it, sir. Yeah. Fine. This, this biochemistry teachers, have you ever tried this in your classroom? What comes next in the series? A, B, C, D, E. And it is not F. 
what could it be? Biotechnology. We can, we, we can play this, right? It is actually K because vitamins is after E, you get K. Very simple things in mathematics, which you can make children think. Very simple things. Very, very simple. What will come for 5, 5, 5? It is again O. How do you get O? 1 into 1 into 1 is 1. O. 2 into 2 into 2 is 8. E. So such activities, create activities, give them shapes. Keep on reminding them. That is important because supposing you give a computer to your typist who was doing typewriting work, this is what the typist will do. This is what the typist will do, right? So find out opportunities, explore, find solutions because teachers, please understand with online teaching, reading, talking, uh, photos, videos, all this is not going to help you unless you give them a hands-on activity, right? Hands-on activity is not new. This is my first standard book, which I'm still having it, which I studied in my school. We had hands-on activity then itself. When I was in first standard, I still have my book with me. Why don't we give hands-on activity? Can we teach children what is happening around us? Something on ecology, which is my favorite subject. When you walk in the rain and hold an umbrella, water falls around me. When I walk and the water falls around me. But in the same way, instead of the umbrella, if I go and stand beneath the tree, beneath the tree, water, a few drops may fall on my head, but the rest of the water falls around me. Fair enough. Very simple. Why does the water fall there? Because the roots which drink are over there. Simple. Can we teach them? Can we teach the simple exercises? How to plant a tree? Socially important interactions. Because many students are not interacted. You see, curriculum you cannot change. Assessment you cannot change. Because it's all fixed. Pedagogy you can change. That is the reason why they are having the seminar. Can we change our pedagogy? Can we create these spaces? What we think is important is different. What interests the student will be different. Can we overlap them? Can we create some situations that way? Can we give them different goals, learning preferences? What is relevant for them? Relevance is very important today. If I talk about relevance, like for example, we have these specific terms called as uh, we are part of the solution, ecosystem restoration. They're talking about ecosystems. But I'll ask you a simple question. This is what is the energy flow which is taught to you right from school. You may study different branches after that. Simple question can we ask them. Who eats more? Elephant will eat more or a dog. Simple, 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 very simple. Because the moment the child says, any student, even the higher education, most of the colleges will say, the elephant eats more. But elephant weighs about 5,000 kg, dog weighs about 20 kg. You feed elephant 50 kg, you feed a dog 1 kg. Food is measured with reference to body weight. 5,000 kg elephant eats 50 kg, 1 kg elephant eats 10 grams. Whereas 20 kg elephant eats 1 kg meat, 20 kg dog eats 1 kg meat, so 1 kg will eat. 50 grams, so dog eats more. Can we try to tell our children, explain it, applying it, what is happening, what is happening, because elephant is eating, because it is in the first trophic level, whereas the dog is in the next trophic level, so it eats more. That is the reason why in India, Asia, we are all vegetarians. We are all vegetarians. You, you have non-vegetarian and a vegetarian friend go to the same restaurant, order for meal. One orders for vegetarian meal, one orders for non-vegetarian meal. What do you get? rice, which is vegetarian, chapati or paratha or uh, puri, which is vegetarian, kut, which is vegetarian, sambar, vegetarian, rasam, vegetarian, uh, morkorba, vegetarian, salad, vegetarian, curd, vegetarian, sweet, vegetarian. One in one bowl, the vegetarian meal may have uh, two pieces of cauliflower or paneer, and uh, the non-vegetarian will have uh, two pieces of chicken or fish. That's all. Can we teach them about earthworms, different varieties? Can we teach composting? That is why we composting. Can we teach them? Because today everything is available on net, right? That's why we compost. Can we teach them how to grow plants? We don't teach them. How much soil is required? Four inches. Can we teach them to grow plants in coconut shells so that they become for their own homes? Do we teach all this? We don't. We don't. We don't teach them water cycling. We don't teach them anything. We don't teach them simple water recycling techniques. So please become creative teachers. Become creative. What is creativity? That's what the man does. The madam doesn't like it. So she breaks it. Good. But you can convert into a tabla. So please do it. Teachers, our, our profession is faculty. And C stands for clarity of purpose, commitment and compassion.
If you don't have this clarity, then your choice of profession is faulty. Please understand that. Trait number 18, working as a teacher often means working effectively in a group, work as a team. Team has the alphabet I, but should not be visible outside. Team has the alphabet I, but should not be visible outside. Is that clear? Look at teamwork, how beautifully teamwork can go. One bike, four people have already sat down. The fifth one doesn't know what to do. You can take the journey forward as a team. Whether you succeed or fail, whether you sit or fall, team is a team. Otherwise, one will be doing, the other one will be repeating. So please do your beautiful teamwork. Do multimedia, lots of things. Because UGC has already decided, even after pandemic, 40% teaching is going to be online mode. So please start preparing. Please start preparing. ICT is nothing new, nothing new. I had developed an ICT software when I was working for NCRT in 9192. I'm not a computer professional. Is that clear? Anybody can work. Don't say only computer science teachers should do it. That's another big problem in most institutions, teachers and heads of institutions throwing the burden on computer science teachers. No, you can take that help, but you learn to do it yourself. I do Skype classes for children in various remote places. I'm able to produce videos for the government of Tamil Nadu. We have done a lot of work in that way. Can you, do it? you can also do it. Simple things. Download. Teach your children. In one minute, you can teach frog metamorphosis. This I have downloaded. I have added music to it. The entire frog metamorphosis in just a minute. So re recruiting or recollecting information. Very simple. So simple as that. So simple as that. So please understand don't follow somebody. This animal goes and jumps over the white line. I don't know why it is jumping. It is jumping over the white line. For what purpose it jumped, nobody knows. It just jumped. Now, just because this fellow jumps, everybody has to jump. So please don't follow other colleges or other teachers. You design your own thing. You design your own thing. Have high expectations. You have gift of knowledge. Understand academic master plan. What is your institution? What is the mission and vision of the college you work for? Have you ever read it? Have you ever understood it? Has the management ever discussed with you people? And how many managements have revised their master plans? The same thing we will write and put a pledge on the top of the building. 20 years, 50 years, the same mission, the same thing. Change it, change it. Students come from different backgrounds. They are confused. They are completely confused today. They are being projected as something great in their own houses. You give them plenty of books, plenty of pressure. They go through stress. And at that time, don't throw them out. Please take them. Otherwise, some idiots will show this. Try to trap them. Try to spoil their lives. Rejection will be them for them. They are contemplating these things. Teachers, we have very, very great responsibility today. So in case you happen to see some child depressed, wants to go and hang themselves, Kindly tell them to hold it and have a gala swing. Yes, dance, dance with the rope, right? Don't go under pressure. Don't burn yourself. Don't hurt yourself, please. Who doesn't have stress? Even children have stress. In Chennai, even this cow wants to go in an air-conditioned bus during summer. Who doesn't have a stress? Continue to learn, learn, update knowledge. Knowledge alone, knowledge is very important. That is what takes you. So keep improving your knowledge. Examination duties will come to you. Set up question papers properly. All these questions will be vague now. Nobody wants this. Nobody wants this. Even in schools, 30% questions are going to be case-based. Teachers, get ready. One question is so big. This is a question. Questions will go to half page. The child has to just underline the, tick the answers based on what the child has studied. This is one question. This is one question of which the child has to answer. I hope you're able to get my points. So everything is changing, get ready. You get invigilation duties, you will get valuation duties. So please shed your ego. Too much of ego only will kill your talent. Evaluate children properly, 
don't regret later don't regret later have patience please have patience today even if you walk politely there is somebody ready to push you down so please walk please have confidence you may feel that this fellow is talking because he is successful it's not so every one of us we have had our share of problems our share of difficulties we have failed we have come up and then came to this moment you you never know how many plates he broke to become a qualified juggler right i understand women please be careful men it is easier women you have lot of work you juggle between home you juggle between work you have lots of response i love this slide by mahindra's uh, director men you have a straight path women have to compete in a different way so please understand these concepts don't try to suppress somebody in life work genuine come up trait number 20 realize that mistakes often precede great learning so if you made mistakes going for a new learning you know like right from childhood in in lkg ukg they will give you these figures and ask you to paint and when you paint the teacher will say don't cross the line don't cross the box and today you have some professional will come you give you this diagram and say draw the line and you will have to draw the line outside the box and they will tell you think outside the box right from childhood we have been told to think inside the box and suddenly they say think outside the box just throw the box just throw the box you do your work beautifully because our education system is like that we tell children sun rises in the east by the time the child comes to class 8 we say sun neither rises nor sets so education is spoiling my common sense so please try to come up this i modified it just for you to understand somebody who has a math skill and a problem solving skill is fit to become an engineer one who has a math skill and ocd type of a person fit to become an accountant problem solving plus people skill fit to become a management employee ocd and argument skill fit to become human resource person people skill and talking skill a sales person arguing skill and talking skill a lawyer but if you have all the skills you are a teacher you are a teacher is it clear we have all the skills and we are always guide on the side and not a sage on the stage so let us change information is flowing time is moving improve your knowledge you already have your knowledge you have gained your experience go into creativity please become creative because your new role is learning facilitator knowledge transfer facilitator counseling skill promoter and situation designer so your new roles are plenty develop all the skills possible you have very challenging roles teachers always you can be a good communicator no problem i teach right from the rural area to everybody to of all ages you can find my curious students sitting over there they are small kutti pai and listening carefully right so it is possible it is possible so please understand these things they are very important we must improve and improvement starts with the alphabet i right so and management and teachers and staff should know why your institution works and for what purpose it works and teachers you don't need the latest technology the cutest classroom or the newest outfit what you require is a passion for learning not teaching and to love every student who enters your classroom so please understand and uh, you know i facilitate thinking i engage mind i listen to questions i encourage risk i support struggle i cultivate dreams i learn every day because i teach t20 teachers traits are there the 21st trait which i wanted to add is you are indeed very human and indeed very human because you rose up to the challenges overnight digital transformation you opened your houses for public viewing every teacher may not have a separate private room in their house so you drew open your houses made with limited resources 30 odd parents watching over your shoulder what you are teaching and of course some of you even compromised on your salaries hats off to you teachers good luck to you all i do know at the beginning of the academic year you will be like this by the end of the academic year this is what we are right this just to share with you i was very poor in maths and physics maths and uh, chemistry and please understand teachers if you have children don't force them that they should become any doctors engineers or computers if you have a feeling anything other than that is a disgrace then you have been listening all through for one and a half hours now to a disgrace and my award 
my reward for all the uh, teachers from Tamil Nadu. You would have read this book in class 10. And what you read, Vermitic is a term coined by Sultan Ismail, the one who is talking to you. That's my research. That's my contribution to the country. And the present textbooks, zoology textbooks of government of Tamil Nadu carry my work in the textbooks. That is achievement. Is that clear? Every teacher can do it. I worked in a college like yours. That's it, nothing else. In fact, we also developed their beautiful, simple experiments for children. So if you have kids at home, of course, Kungu College, Vidya, Sangeeta and others and the college has been thankful that we were able to do a lot of experiments through Inspire program for the children, which I was able to develop along with uh, Inspire with uh, APJ Kalam sir and other people. Now it is also being followed in Portugal. This is a Tamil book which has all the details in it. And uh, thanks to the management, principal, coordinators, teachers, everybody over there. Thank you. All the best teachers. Good luck to you all. Thank you. Thank you. No words to express our gratitude for your session, sir. We have Thank learned a lot. Difference between talking and teaching, brain balance room, death by PowerPoint, 20 trades of a teacher, and many more. We have also learned how we can make learning simple and interesting. You have motivated us a lot. And I believe that this energy will help us to motivate and create a good environment for our students for better learning. It has also motivated us to use different pedagogy, which can suit their needs. Your one hour session has brought more clarity in our thoughts, which I'm sure will be transmitted to our students in a better way. We also assure you, sir, that faculty members from all the discipline will learn and not depend only on computer science faculty members. We also understand all our new roles and I'm sure we will keep learning and move ahead as a human. We have a lot more to assure, sir, but we don't want to keep telling, but do it in action. Thank you so much for your session, sir. And we really don't have words to tell our feelings. Thank you, ma. Thank you very much, ma. Thank you. And now the session is open for discussion, and I request all the participants to actively involve in discussion. Tamilaracy is raising a hand. You can unmute and ask your question, please. Participants, you can unmute yourself and you can clarify your doubts. Yeah, go ahead. Padma Priya. Are you able to unmute? Yeah, hello. Yeah, uh, I have unmuted. Uh, good morning, sir. This is Padma Priya here. Good morning. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, uh, sir, so I wanted to have a question like, uh, when when a child gets qualified and they chose a profession, many of the kids aim for, you uh, know, uh, as an engineer, doctor, or researcher, but uh, being an impressive teacher also. You now, very few of them, I have seen them coming up as a teacher again. Now, how is that the kids' you know, mentality nowadays? Because in future, uh, like a professor of you, or uh, an ex extremely well versed, and that's how to create passionate teachers. How can a teacher be a role model to influence somebody to become a teacher? Uh, it all depends on the individual potential, man. You see, to become a teacher, one thing is they are afraid because sometimes in the they have had bad experiences themselves uh, from uh, uh, not a good teacher. Now. I had some bad teachers and some very good teachers in my life who molded my life. So you, you get fascinated and then you take over teaching as a profession. And one more thing is we never teach uh, children on communication. We are so much worried about marks that we don't want children to just read and vomit, but not to communicate. When I was a child in school, they did not teach me grammar. They did not teach me grammar in my school. They started teaching me how to talk what to talk, how to talk, communicate. And once we were familiar with the language, they started telling us what is a noun, what is a pronoun. 
today class one you start with grammar and you spoil the creativity of the child when the child is learning cat cat in another class the teacher comes and talks about flower and leaf right in english so the child is still doesn't know what what is uh, what are the um, alphabets in the uh, word flower but we are already teaching flower when the child is reading about cat cat Uh, there is a problem in our uh, uh, um, academic system in the curriculum we try to revise it we try to bring it but there are lots of pressures to work on it which we will have to have a gradual change at that point of time yes we will be able to get good teachers thank you very much sir yeah and also so much of rules and regulations by the government like uh, because of you know uh, uh, yeah it is to streamline but uh, it it is not favoring much of the teachers like uh, no no uh, corporal punishments even though majority of them didn't do it even recent times no that kind of a tension exists behind their mind you no know, to take up a profession uh, that also sometimes you uh, know affects me uh, when when you know uh, you, see, you see every it, child every child who goes out in the evening after 8 pm and returns home at 12 pm doesn't mean that the child is drunk right But, mm -hmm. parents, but parents are not willing to send them out because yes. you put a rule. You put a rule, even though you know no. that your child is not going to drink, he will get spoiled. He will get do. So sometimes because of one or two bad things, a general yes. rule is not in. Yeah. A general rule right. is not in. It is not for the sure. purpose of stopping teachers from uh, uh, taking children into care, but because yes. some teachers have mishandled and misdone certain deeds. Mm -hmm. So some general rules of that. Yeah, and apart from this, sir, I would like I to add on when the quality. I have, I have wind up. I have another meeting by twelve. Oh, okay. I think I'll have Fine, to take sir. permission from them also. Sure, sir. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Vidya, ma'am. Yes, sir. Please. I have Ash. the city college governing council meeting now. Oh yes, sir. Yeah. We will wind up now, sir. Then we will. But join. just want to add one point, sir. Beautiful yeah. and powerful speech, sir. Great points made by you again. Each time you make us to think a lot. It's always a pleasure to listen to you. Always, sir. Thanks for giving us a great start. I much. think uh, I'll get back to you. I understand your schedule, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. Deepa, uh, we'll go yes. ahead with the vote of thanks, sir. Yeah, please. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Attending a seminar has numerous benefits, including improving communication skills, growing expert knowledge, networking with others, and remaining motivated and confident i'm sure all the above were attained on the first day of our fdp program now i invite mr g kartikeyan assistant professor department of biochemistry to propose the vote of thanks good afternoon everyone i am honored and fortunate to have the opportunity to deliver the vote of thanks for this five day national level faculty development program on advancing towards sustainable teaching and learning pedagogy organized by dbt star departments of our college on behalf of our organizing team i extend my sincere thanks to the almighty god for making today's today's given a grand success first and foremost i thank our special guest sultan ahmed ismail teacher soil biologist ecologist and member of tamil nadu state development policy council chennai who spent his busiest time for gracing this occasion and thank you for your interesting and highly informative speech thank you sir i would like to express our gratitude to our correspondent sir k palnichami avargal for his moral support and guidance thank you sir i would like to take this opportunity to record my heartfelt thanks to our principal sir Dr. Yen Raman for his right logistic support and guidance in all our activities. Thank you, sir. We are grateful to our DBT coordinator, convener of this program, Dr. A K Vidya Ma'am, for her words of encouragement, and I thank him for her continued support. Thank you, Ma'am. Next, I would like to express my special thanks to our DBT department staff members for making this event successful with your valuable contribution. Thank you all. I thank all the distinguished invitees present here by accepting our invitation, and also I thank all the good hearts who have worked behind the screen. Once again, I thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Karthikeyan. Participants, feedback form is posted in the chat box. Kindly fill the feedback form for day one, which will be useful for further processing. Thank you. Stay safe and stay healthy. 
we will meet tomorrow at the same time 10:15 am thank you all thank you all participants thank you so much sir and thanks to all participants thank you participants we request all of you to assemble for tomorrow session by dr meera nadrajan at 10:15 am thank you
madam can i wind up the meeting vidya madam pranav sir sir solunga sir madam meeting end pannirala man madam meeting end pannikalam sir end pannirala sir okay 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 thank you sir thank you thank you sir. Yeah. Mm.